record so I can say hi. Welcome to Jane Elliott, who is from Jane Travel Guru, which we will find out a little bit more about soon. So um, Jane's here with me, Kylie Mo Brown, from Positive Passionate Women in Business. And it's part of a new series we're doing called Hello You. And we're finding out about our members and um, what, not just about your business, but really all about you, because we're big believers here about connecting, growing and giving. So uh, welcome, Jane. Thanks for being here with us for 15 minutes of 15 questions. Or should I put it around the other way? 15 questions in 15 minutes. So um, thank you. Oh, thank you. So this is, um, we'll just get straight into your questions because then we'll find out about what you do as we go. Okay, so first of all, Jane, can you please tell me something about yourself that others might be surprised to know about you? Lots of things. But I'm, you might find it surprising that as a travel agent for the first probably five years of my working life, I was terrified of flying. That is fascinating. How did you overcome that? I just kept doing it. It was like, I'm going, I'm going. And I would, and at the time that I made the plan, which was usually, you know, a couple of months in advance, I'd be fine. And as the time got closer and closer, I'd get more and more nervous and the, and the week before my trip I'd be just sleepless nights and worrying and the stepping onto the plane was like the last thing um, and I developed this habit of texting my um, my honey pie and my daughter before every flight saying I love you <laughs> which I still do I still do every flight but yeah I just kept doing it just kept doing it and it was terrifying and I would and I'd always ask to be in the middle of the plane right up near the screen and just I hate that thing where they announce how high you are and how fast you're going and what about turbulence yeah turbulence and actually I used to be the most scared of landing because it always felt like the difference between you know coming in like this and coming in like that was so slight so that would be the scariest time until somebody told me that actually the most dangerous time is the takeoff so that switched my fear to the takeoff wow. and the turbulence I'm not really too bad with I don't know I just sort of feel like that's part of the road unless it gets really bad and then I then I start forgetting that I'm calm and remembering that I'm terrified <laughs> amazing that you that you moved through that Jane though yeah. that's super awesome Okay, yeah. so if there was something in your past that you were able to go back and do differently, what would that be? I, I, I saw this question, I saw you ask it before, and I thought there are so many questionable choices, uh, <laughs> but none of them I would change because then, I, then I'd be somewhere else doing something else. Um, so really the only thing I could come up with is so boring. It, it, was, uh, it was selling a house when... Uh, it, I should have hung on to it, really. And that's the thing that when I think about all sorts of things, I go back and I go, why did I sell that house? Why did I sell it? And it was being pressured by uh, a partner in a relationship, actually. So I guess it was, it's kind of tied up with that. Why did I, why did I second guess myself? Why did I forget that I, what I should be doing, really? Interesting. I don't yeah. think that's a boring one at all. It's a big one, that's for sure. So Jane, tell us what you love most about what you do as Jane Travel Guru. Well, I, I'd have to say, to be brutally honest, the thing I love most is when I get to travel <laughs> because that's why I do it. That's why I started doing it. I just love to go anywhere that I can. And so every chance that I get to travel, I'm often thinking of my clients when they don't, when they're alone and they don't have anyone to travel with, I'm like, well, I'll come, I'll, I'll go anywhere, pretty much anywhere. I can't think of anywhere I wouldn't go again. Um, and so that's the thing I love absolutely the most. And the, and the rest of it is, is planning my travel and then planning other people's travel would come third. And, um, you know, and, and then enjoying, I love to get pictures from people. Actually, I don't ask enough for people to post pictures on my Facebook page and things like that. Um, that's one of the things that I really like to see and don't do enough. Do you know what? I just suddenly thought, I know so many people that love sharing pictures of their travels 
and people get a little bit tired of it. In fact, someone sent me a message recently, a private message saying, just letting you know that I'm going to stop posting these pictures because I've gotten some rude remarks from people. And, wow. and I was like, oh, but I've enjoyed it because I can't go away at this point. I've really, really loved it. And so I thought maybe if you say to the people, share more with me yeah. and I can post some of the stuff, you know, on my page. Yes. And they might just yeah. message you know, private message them to you. They might love that opportunity. Yeah, and then I'm you sure they would. Choose. But I th for me personally, there's nothing more fun than getting involved in someone's adventures. I don't want to see them just drinking cocktails by the pool. Like you want to see. Oh, no. Or just yeah. all their meals. I mean, some meals are good. Some. Yeah, I don't want to see meals all the time either. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually going to add um, an extra little question in here. So maybe it'll have to be 16 minutes and 16 questions. But the ex extra one to you is what's the favorite place that you've ever traveled to? Now, actually, that's a really tricky question. I do get asked that question quite a lot, and I don't really have one favourite. I love Japan. I love Japanese food, Japanese architecture. The people look beautiful. They dress well. The, 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 the countryside is gorgeous. They can't hold their booze, so late night in Tokyo is not that attractive. But generally, lovely food and lovely people. I love the food in Taiwan and, and the countryside is beautiful. I love Italy, of course, the food and the countryside and the architecture. Uh, France, everywhere, really. I just, the, uh, India, there are different things about every country that I love. I was stuck in Russia for two days. That's something that people might be surprised by. I took the Trans-Siberian with my daughter who was nine at the time from China to Germany and uh, and they just didn't have a train. When when a whole train load of people arrived in Moscow, we they just didn't have the, the space on the train that we booked on to go. And so I spent two days wandering the streets of Moscow, nowhere to stay, but I, two people, that two different lots of people took pity on me because I had a child with me and put us up for, for each of the nights. <laughs> really hard to find any food because all the places would tell us they were booked out, but I think it was just because they didn't have any, didn't have enough food. And I loved it. I mean, it was terrifying. I thought we were going to be shot because we didn't have a visa. Thought we were going to be shot any minute. And uh, but I just, it was just great. Oh, every, every place I've been has had some amazing aspect to it. Jane, that's really inspired me to think. I think one of our online meetups for positive, passionate women in business needs to be travel and talking yeah. about adventures and travel and yeah that's exciting because you have like what many of us would consider a dream job I do believe. Mm. Mm. So what about what do you love least about what you do? Uh, uh, it's it's okay so the first thing that comes to mind is a lot of my work ends up being for nothing because uh, because it's like you 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 give people all the plans and then they and then they never really were going to go or they think, oh, yeah, I've got all those ideas. I'll just book it myself. Or there are three group, three friends travelling together and they come back and, and someone else says, yeah, well, I, I, I think that's a great idea, but I've got this travel agent that I want to go with. So there is a lot of work that you do for nothing, but that's the case with a lot of jobs. So it's not really a fair thing to complain about. It's just the way that the industry is. And, and, and the idea is to get good enough so that people recognize that you're the best person to book with mm. so um, so that's kind of the surface least favorite but um, apart from that it's it's probably trying to get trying to get refunds and trying to explain to people why this might not they might not be getting what they want mm -hmm. and if you I'm weren't doing that of mind at the moment yes yeah I bet that's been really full on lately. Mm. Um, if you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? I'd probably be a tour guide. Uh -huh. In <laughs> Australia or overseas? Anywhere, anywhere. I'd be, I'd be, and also I would love to be uh, the a kind of events management for retreats, for retreats and for workshops, and for, that would that would that would travel the latest. So you know you could not necessarily be a tour guide that's traveling from place to place, but you could be 
helping groups of people to be to settle in and to organize them in one place amazing thank you so what's been your biggest success um in your working life and what are you most proud of it would be starting my own business i worked for the same company for 19 and a half years and i really was i was so unhappy for the last you know five of those years but i was but I have a mortgage and I have responsibilities and, and so I was really concerned that even though I didn't make much money, that I would lose what money I made. And eventually it really wasn't my entrepreneurial spirit so much as the fact that it just got so horrible that I, I was sort of like, I'd rather just leave and find a job as a checkout chick, assuming you can still get them. Um, and so, and the fact that I, I bit the bullet and I left and, and actually have ended up psychologically, certainly, and existentially much better off, but also financially better off than I was. So that's, that's the thing that I'm most proud of is even though it took me too long to do that, I did it and, and it is a success generally. Brilliant. Well done. So who are your dream clients and what type of job do you like doing with them or for them the most? There are, there are so many different clients. I mean, the, if you're feeling lazy or not, if you're feeling uninspired, then the dream client is the client that comes in and knows exactly what they want to do. Here I've got this, this cruise or this tour or this, you know, high-end package and it's all put together and I just want you to put your name on it and book it and then it's done it's easily done but that's obviously a dream job because there's less work to it but then there's also the dream client who has got excitement about their trip that they want to do um, and and will take your suggestions and consider them and run with them and come back with others. And, and also, oh, and really my dream client is someone who comes back to me at the end of the trip and says, this hotel I really liked. This hotel didn't work for me. I didn't like that area. And I've found this great thing that you've never thought of before or you've never heard of that I can then give to you so that they can give to me to, to pass on. That's a dream client, the dream client, the one that has a, that you have an ongoing relationship with. So you're doing accommodation and, um, sorry, so flights and accommodation and also and accommodation. tours and things. Yeah. Tours. Everything that you want to do on your travel. Everything. It's, I'm a one-stop shop. Fantastic. So what challenges do you see impacting your industry? Now that question can relate to what's happening now with all the COVID stuff or just in general, however you want to interpret that question is up to you. So that yeah, was well, certainly, yeah, certainly COVID has just smashed the industry generally and people are really scared and, and sad. And I mean, I, I'm still working. I'm still working full time. It's just that I'm working to give money back to people. So I'm not making any money anymore. There are other people who have lost their jobs and uh, are sitting at home and complaining about being bored. I haven't had that problem at all. But um, I think that the challenge is to, is to remind people, because there'll be a lot of people out there whose travel agents are working really hard for them and they recognise that. So, so I'm sure we'll get a lot of people who, who say, yes, I would never book myself because, you know, I couldn't, have, I couldn't have dealt with that airline and those four hotels and that tour company and that insurance company and, I, and I'm really glad my travel agent did that. But there are also people out there who don't see, don't recognise the work that their travel agent's doing for them. And all they see is that, you know, I paid $3,000 and I'm going to lose 200 of it when I get that money back and I'll never book with a travel agent again. So uh, that's one of the challenges moving forward is to, is to encourage, to, to explain to people why that might be the case and why it's still a better idea to deal with a travel agent and, and also to get more of the stories about people who didn't deal with a travel agent and they had a terrible experience. Mm. And again, the, the, the challenges is to, to remind people that our value and to, and to point out that 
in 99% of the cases, you, you don't pay any more uh, if you book with a travel agent for your one, one trip than if you book those 10 different components by yourself. So you're getting paid by the airline directly, aren't you? That's right, yes. Yeah. So, right. we, so we, get, we get paid by the airline and by the hotel and by the insurance company, which means that it doesn't, it's, it's not on top. I mean, there are, there are, there are um, exceptions to that, like for example, Australian domestic flights. In the past, I've said, hey, you might as well book that yourself because there's no commission. So if I book it for you, you're gonna pay $10 more each flight, still not much more. So a lot of clients will say, I'd rather you do the work and I'll pay you the $20 extra for the return. But some people say, oh, well, I, you know, I'm pretty good on the computer, I'll do it myself. And I would say, yeah, you do it yourself because I don't want you to pay more money than you need to. Uh, whereas moving forward, I'm going to be going, no, 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 book it with me, book it with me, and maybe you can do some hire car as well, and, you know, maybe there's a hotel, and, and I can sort of put all of that together, and in there there'll be like 10 or $20 or something. Mm. That will keep. And right. then next time you'll be so amazed at how great I was that when you do your river cruise in Europe, that will make me money, but it won't cost you more. And, in fact, because there's a commission, you can you can take some of that commission out so it's cheaper for you but I'm still making money so it works out better for, better for everybody very good so Jane when you were little and you were asked the question what do you want to be when you grow up what would you say I don't remember anybody actually asking me that question we weren't a terribly ambitious family when I think about it but my, my dad was an actor and my mum was an actor when we were little but uh, my dad was an actor my his whole life his whole life until he dropped it and so and that's what I really wanted to be through my kind of you know teen years um, and I was in my early 20s until I figured out how hard it was wow yeah so then this might be an interesting question this now that you've just said that you were an actor uh, so if you were an animal what would you like to be I would be a cat Oh, the person just interviewed also said a cat. Oh, really? Yes, that was true. House she said a cat. cat in her own house. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You not out, not not out in the jungle, not having to fight for food, <laughs> having having servants, a cat with servants. <laughs> it's great. So, if you were a movie character, who would you be and why? Uh, I'd be a slightly younger Miss Marple. Ah. Oh. Oh, very good. I love it. I, I really like to get to the bottom of things and I like to uh, work out from my opinions of people's characters what they would be, what they'd be capable of doing. I find that fascinating. Very good. So if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Uh, here. Definitely here. And, but and I do love the idea. Live, Jane? Oh, okay. So I live in Ballina. I live um, three minutes drive, 10 minutes walk from the, the river, two rivers and a canal, seven brilliant beaches, um, <laughs> bike paths. The place is really just, and it's flat. It's wonderful. Uh, there's everything here that you need. And, and the Northern Rivers generally, the weather is fantastic. It's a bit cold at the moment probably like 15 degrees or something <laughs> um, but yeah it's it, we have everything here the weather is fantastic and the and the and the countryside is beautiful and the town is just big enough and just small enough having said that I would also love to live around the world I did travel for two years through Asia with my daughter when she was seven when she left and ten when we came back and um, I did spend quite a long time in a few places. I think um, five months in Taiwan teaching English and six months in Japan working in a hostess bar and uh, a couple of months in Hong Kong over two times I worked in a nightclub serving beer. They were happy just to have ice in their beer if it wasn't cold enough. And uh, I, I would really love to, and I worked in England as a cleaner and a market researcher. And I love the idea of just going to live somewhere for six months or a year. And I would do that. And I'd love to live in Italy for a year and love to go back to England. 
Um, I, I could live in most places for a, a certain amount of time, but I would definitely want to be back here. Mm, that sounds a bit of a dream, doesn't it? Mm. Um, so Jane, what does being a positive, passionate woman in business mean to you? I really like the idea of knowing who the people around you are. So getting to know uh, people who, who are in a position to help your business, but also who you are in a position to help and people who are on, in the same kind of area, but also doing something completely different. I love, I'm, I'm not very good in a, in a big crowd. I'm not great with, I'm not very good at all with small talk. So I just really like the idea of getting to know people individually so that you've got something to talk to them about. Wonderful. Thank you. And what are you most proud of in your life? Lots and lots of things. But I was um, a child of hippie parents homeless on the streets uh, for a few years in my teens, then a, then a sort of a stripper in the cross, um, and then a, a single parent. And I think the most, the thing I'm most proud of is that I can, under, can I can empathise, I can understand, I can, I can relate to people in all, all sorts of situations in their lives and all sorts of walks of life and all sorts of social strata and I am very proud of the fact that I am I've maintained relationships through my life with I'm um, close to people that I was close to it from school and from work life all the way through and that I managed to raise a daughter I only, only have one child who is an incredible person and that things I did didn't really screw her up too <laughs> And yeah, and that people I love are still around. God, that's a fabulous answer, Jane. It's made me have a million more questions in there. But I think that it would be really important to um, let people know. So now, of course, we're adding an extra little feature in here, but um, what other passionate, positive, passionate women in business wouldn't know is that you and I have met in a different realm as well, which was um, to do with our community work. So um, many people wouldn't know that I, um, I'm a co-founder of a not-for-profit called the Bangalore Lion Hearts, where we feed people in need. Um, but Jane, I'd love it if you'd take a minute to share what your involvement is with your own community project, which I just find completely mind-blowing with what you're doing. Um, okay, thank you. And I do talk up the Bell and Alliance Hearts all the time. I think you're a, that's a fantastic group. And just a, if anyone hasn't heard about it, and go and have a look. It's just a wonderful group. Thank you. Um, and the group that I'm uh, a member of they, uh, is called Compassionate Communities in Northern New South Wales. And it was formed a couple of years ago under the auspices of Groundswell. And it's a very big concept where we're trying to kind of normalise the process of death and dying in the community. Um, and also uh, to, encourage, so to encourage people to plan for the end of their lives and to just realise that it's a normal part of life. We're also uh, trying to reduce isolation in the community. So people who are dealing with uh, grief and loss and social isolation. Uh, we, we're trying to kind of reach out to those people under the, the because it's a compassionate community is that's what we should be doing. And so one of the things that we do is we have a, a monthly coffee and community meeting, which is starting again this month on the 24th of June in Ballina, if anyone's right. interested. Um, and also I started last year um, a, a a choir where, which is based at the moment in Ballina called the Threshold Choir, where we are learning songs to sing to people who are uh, in, to, moving towards the end of their lives. So people who are, who are dying uh, and, uh, and understanding how soothing and, and, and enveloping and joyful singing can be and how it's so important 
to give people to 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 show up for people and 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 singing is one way to do that and so we've started singing again we're rehearsing in the park at the moment and only 10 of us can be there at the time but we're hoping that they're going to re release uh, uh, increase those numbers soon uh, so we rehearse once a week in um, in Ballina and we haven't yet we only started just before lockdown I think early February so we haven't actually um, got to the point where we'll be singing for people yet but we're hoping towards the end of the year so if anyone's interested in singing songs for people who are gravely ill um, get in touch Thank you, Jane. That is just such a special thing. I have a, um, a beautiful friend that's in a hospice at the moment, and um, I've really loved the way that she has gone about her process. So she um, was only diagnosed just before Christmas, so it's been very, very quick. Yeah, very and she started a Facebook group straight away and invited all the people in that she knew would be, want to be getting regular updates. And majority of us haven't been able to see her since her diagnosis. Um, and obviously this whole COVID thing and just everything that's going on. But there's been somebody each day doing an update that's come from her family or from her partner or something because her own update was a few weeks ago and she said this will be my last update and it has been an am amazingly beautiful way to keep up with what's going on and a beautiful way to be slowly going through that grieving process as well but the reason I bring that up is because just two nights ago there was a beautiful post um, that, that ended up having a sing-along and a dance and entertaining her for a few moments and she got a lot of joy out of that and it oh, was, yeah. you know just some fun in that hospice room and stuff and I thought wow how how incredibly special. So thank you for sharing that. So oh, one other thing that we haven't yet established, but we're working on it. So if anybody's interested, um, we really want to establish a coffin club here as well so that people can make their own coffins um, or make coffins for, for their loved ones. And so far um, I've reached out to all of the men's sheds and I, I guess it's not surprising that a lot of men find it difficult to kind of, approach that subject and they haven't really taken it up I'm going to I'm going to I went to that great community day at the at the men's the men's shed in Bangalore and I'm, I'm hoping that maybe that some people there might be more interested in a coffin club than than the others that we've reached out to but if anybody out there is listening who thinks they might be able to contribute to establishing coffin club that would be great too that's wonderful. And Jane, what I'll make sure that we do is we, um, in the caption of this, we'll have all the links to all the places that they can connect up with you about those different things. Cause they're really, it's awesome that you're doing that above and beyond your business, but really touching on such big, big areas that, as you just said, a lot of people aren't um, super keen to go there. So, and you know, we need it. We all need it. That's for sure. We do. So, we do. It's, it's going to happen to us all. Don't be surprised. <laughs> Absolutely. So our 15th and final question is, what's one tip that you can share of how you've been able to stay positive or how you continue to stay positive when things are really challenging for you? I, well, I think a gratitude list is a very a good thing to do. I just, I, I feel feel and it's interesting because if I listed the things and some of them I mentioned before that that I've experienced it may not seem like they would be things to be grateful for you know being homeless on the streets as a 15 year old um, working in a, as a barmaid in a brothel those things that people might not think are things to be grateful for but I am grateful for everything uh, that has shaped the person that I am and it's it's very and and now particularly it's easy to be grateful when you look around the world and I just think well I'm not I've got JobKeeper wow that's amazing and I've got free healthcare and I've I've got a roof over my head and no one's shooting at me when I walk out in the street um, so it's it's very easy to find things to be grateful for and you just keep those top of mind and it, even if you're feeling down if you if you fake it until you make it, you can get there. Take it one step at a time and watch comedy because if you laugh, even if you don't feel happy, you're releasing endorphins which raise your mood and help you and, and help you to get there. 
Shane, that is such a great tip. And on that note, my daughter and I have been watching this funny little series on Netflix. And it's not really a series I ever would have chosen to watch. It's just a little sitcom-y type of a thing. But it's called Kim's Convenience, set in Toronto. Nice. And I, I literally, well, her and I both, she's 17, and we both just laugh out loud. My husband's only managed to see a couple of episodes, and he found them very, very funny. Very, very clever writing. But you're right. When we can laugh out loud at comedy, it just can make all the difference. It's very... I used to have debilitating anxiety, which actually started on a plane from Darwin to Kupang in Timor, which was when I started to be scared of flying. But it, it kind of followed me through my life for quite a long time. And, and you'd be at that sort of really terrifying adrenaline hit in the middle of the night. And somebody told me two things. One of them was to count your breathing, which was helpful. And the other one was to laugh and just to make yourself laugh. And it, it, it's amazing what a difference when you're totally full of ang uh, uh, adrenaline and, and fear and you just force that laugh, how, it, how, incredibly, uh, how incredibly quickly your, your mood can change. Yeah, amazing. It really does work. Even if you think it's completely fake, it works. Amazing. Thank you, Jane. And thank you. I was going to say thank you for sharing 15 minutes and 15 questions, but I think it ended up being 30 minutes and probably closer to 30 questions. And I'm so grateful that you spent that time with me today and shared some of those bits about your life and your work and your extra community work, et cetera. That's been really special. And we're also really grateful that you're a member of the Positive Passionate Women in Business Huddle because it's awesome having you here. So, thank you. So to and, all you know, thank you for everything you do. And I know that you're doing a lot of stuff for free at the moment. And, and you're, you are, I'm sure, widening your audience. And I'm sure that's going to come back and, and to a benefit because uh, although I, my budget has, has evaporated into, for, for, for business, I, will, I certainly intend to start throwing some money your way. And I think everybody <laughs> should. Um, but oh, I think Jane. what you're doing generally is just it's so wonderful and it's an extension of your personality that you can sit in front of the computer for, for all this time and just be up, upbeat and positive and sharing all that stuff for us all the time. It's great. Oh, anyway. it's just, it's a, it's a privilege that I can do that. And uh, thank you very much for what you've said. That's very kind. So I'd just like everybody to know that all of the details about how you can get in touch with Jane. So the two hats, the Jane Travel Guru and the Jane with the amazing compassionate communities. So that'll all be in the caption so you can get in touch. And um, Jane, what will happen is that, as you know, this has gone out live on Facebook, but also it'll be on YouTube. So you'll be able to, um, that will go into the Positive Passionate Women in Business group and then you can share it wherever you like with your audience also. So awesome to have spent this time with you. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you at our next meetup. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thanks, Jane. Bye-bye.